Hi, this is Marcus Giuliano from HealthyChefDude.com, or you can find me at HealthConsciousFood.com. And uh, it's January 12th today, and uh, the New York Times has a great article in this dining section today. I love uh, the New York Times. I look for the Wednesday dining section all the time. The title of the article is, For Some, Kosher Equals Pure. Uh, and since I own a restaurant, Aroma Time Bistro, I have customers that ask me, do you, we serve kosher beef? Because we serve beef, we serve seafood, poultry, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, and we even dabble in, in some raw foods. We basically serve something for everyone, as we like to say it. Some people say, well, do you serve kosher beef? And for some reason, the general public thinks that kosher meat is on this higher level of quality. And there are certain quality levels that are in kosher meat, but people automatically assume that because it's kosher, there's no hormo added hormones, there's no added antibiotics, and that these cows are just living on these green pastures. That's not the case at all. Um, there are certain cases where there might be an, a really ethical kosher producer out there that has taken all those guidelines. But because it's kosher doesn't mean that it's that automatically at all. And if it doesn't say it, it's definitely not. I went to a, a synagogue uh, last year on, on a on a kosher um, on a biblical uh, uh, food thing on, on Judaism and and foods of, the, of 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 the biblical scriptures, and it was done by the rabbi at the synagogue. And everybody in the audience thought that kosher meat was hormone free, antibiotic free, free range, grass fed, beautiful cattle. And they thought the stuff they were going to the grocery store and getting was that cat that beef, and that's not the case at all. Um, kosher meat does have certain advantages where they salt it and pull out pull out some of the bacteria. Um, the animal has to be has to look phenomenal to be able to, to walk through and go through the processing plant. Um, they don't shock the animals. They actually just um, do a, a more of what they feel as a humane way of, of slaughtering the animal. Which I was had the the privilege in Colorado in the San Luis Valley um, to meet some kosher meat uh, some ranchers who put their cattle through a kosher processing plant, and all the cattle ranchers I met in that valley said they would never ever ever put their cattle through that process again. They said the process is horrific. They said they were shocked, they were misled, and they did not they they felt they felt for the cattle. They'd rather have the cattle go through a smaller processing plant, get shocked, do the, do, do the conventional. You know, if you're going to eat meat, you want to definitely avoid the big, big processors because they're the ones cutting the corners. Uh, you know, they're the ones that they, that they write the documentaries about. You know, they make you feel all bad about what you're eating. Then sometimes in the last chapter, they might say, well, now there's hope and here's a small little processing plant and the small little ranch and you should feel much better about this. And they re reference like Polyface Farm and some other farms like Lasseter Grassland Beef in, 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 one, uh, in one book. Those guys are small producers who are doing great jobs. If you can get a hold of their beef, enjoy their beef. But if you're going to go to the grocery store and you're going to say, well, Jim, am I buying this meat in the grocery store? Am I buying kosher meat, this and that? You know, chances are if you're buying that kind of meat, you shouldn't be eating meat. Um, at the restaurant, we really strive to find small ranches, small producers. I do a lot of research to find out um, where they're getting processed. Sometimes beef or the cattle are raised in these great green pastures done right, and then they're sent to conventional processing. And they're mixed in with other cattle, and, and they're just, you know, in a line with 400 other ca cattle um, to get processed. That's, you know, it, the whole picture is taken in when, when, when we purchase beef at the restaurant. But, you know, back to the kosher production. Yeah, so they are, they do take some steps, but it doesn't mean the cattle are on these green pastures all day and um, utmost care. It just means the cattle look good. And there's a rabbi inspecting the, the carcasses and, and making sure that there's no disease and things like that. So there are some measures taken. So if you want to eat meat, look for grass-fed meat. Look for a small production. Call the rancher. If there's a guy, if there's a ranch that's doing the right thing and you see the label, call them. They'll tell you. Go to the website. The bigger companies want to hide what they're doing because they know what they're doing sometimes is cutting corners and they want to put a big, nice picture of the farm or some graphic artist designed them something that doesn't even exist on the farm. Um, you walk into the grocery store, you see these green pastures, cows, and milk. It doesn't like that. It's all it's all cement blocks. It's it's trucks pulling in. It's buildings. That's where most of the food is being produced. So call the farmer. They're going to be proud of what they're doing. They're going to tell you what they're doing. They're going to they'll invite you over for 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 a visit if, if they're local. 
Um, I've been on lots and lots of farms, especially in Colorado, here in New York. I've been through the processing plants, through the slaughter plants, slaughter processing plants. I've seen what's going on, good and bad. So I really know the right questions to ask. And when I meet vendors comes shows up with a new meat or a new farm, and I start asking questions they can't answer. You know, I'm very weary, so I call the ranch. I do as much research as I possibly can. So, but back to the kosher. Um, and mention some other items in there like, um, you know, cheeses and things like that. Um, kosher certification you know, helps people expand their marketing capabilities, especially in vitamins and minerals, supplements like that. Um, and it helps them expand um, their sales reach and expand into the kosher market. But a lot of people that are not Jewish following kosher law are buying kosher products because they feel that they are of a higher quality. So beware on the beef and the poultry side. You know, cheeses, kosher cheeses, I think that's a good thing because when you see that label, the PARV label on there, um, you know that it's vegetarian. So it's just a guarantee that it's vegetarian. There still could be eggs or honey in it, so not good for vegans. But if you look at like cheese and you're concerned about um, the animal rennet, which is basically the stomach linings that they grind up and they make this bacteria, that's fermented into this bacteria that they make the cheese with, Kosher cheese is not going to have that because kosher dietary laws, you can't, you can't consume pork and certain parts of the animal. So that's not going to be in the cheeses. So all their cheeses are going to be vegetarian. They're not going to have animal um, beef or pork or byproducts in them to, to make, to make them the, cheese, the cheese process. I do like that. Kosher salt, no good on the kosher salt. If you're going to consume salt, you're going to want to consume high-quality, mineral-dense, unprocessed, unrefined, unheated salt and use the salt after when you're done cooking sprinkle it on and chefs yes no on the kosher salt you've got to get off the kosher salt chefs chefs love kosher salt they love the large granulars i was hooked on it for years and one chef that i worked for who knew nothing about health and i didn't know anything about health at the time says you know marcus th this um this salt is just regularly processed salt it's it's it has all the other chemicals in it and everything that's why it doesn't clump together and cake together and it's just but it's just you know, in a different form that us chefs like to use. And once you start tasting other salts and the high quality Celtic salts and the Himalayan salts and, you know, maybe the uh, 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 Hawaiian uh, salts, you'll see these salts have great flavor and some of them have different profiles. But those are the salts you want. So chefs off the kosher salt and you definitely shouldn't be on the table, table salt whatsoever. Um, you know, so just, uh, you know, I worked growing up in the cats because I worked in and out of some kosher hotels and through Passover and some of the holidays the rabbis would come in and it was an interesting way 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 of, of doing things kosher vegetables bugs are totally unacceptable if they see a bug in in their lettuce they're like they, they freak out because that's not not part of, of what happens so think about it if you're buying lettuce that has no bugs in it whatsoever there's a reason why the bugs aren't there because they're probably spraying chemicals on there when I open up a case of Swiss chard or a case of lettuce and I see stuff crawling around, I haven't seen anything in there or something, I see a worm, I found a worm in my Swiss chard a week ago that I was making juice out of, I was like, wow, there's life in here. People go to the supermarket, they open up corn and they see a worm, which you don't see worms anymore in corn. That's a thing that's been gone for 10 years or so. But remember the days you used to open up and see a worm, you used to put the corn back? I go to the farmer's market and I look for those worms because that just means it means that other things want to eat what we're eating. If it's untouched by nature, nature knows not to touch it. Birds know not to touch it. Worms know. Things know not to touch it. So why are we touching it? So it's kind of a flip on the correlation of how you look at food. So my question is, if you are buying kosher produce, is it organic? And if it's not organic, because it's, if, it's if it's organic, they're going to say it. But really, what do they have to do to go to that means to make the produce that clean or sterile that other things don't want to don't want to um, be involved in, in eating it. Um, so it's just a, a very good point today. New York Times today, uh, for some, kosher equals pure. It's just the flip side on that. For some things, it's good. Some things, buyer beware. You can find me at healthconsciousfood.com or at uh, healthychefdude.com, and we'll talk to you later. Until then, um, enjoy some good food, high-quality, mineral-dense food.